Um, first thing on the docket, first thing to talk about. Have you guys seen this? Do you know who this guy is? His name is uh, Daniel Silver, right? This is the guy, Daniel Silver. This dude right here. So, supposedly he was a contestant on a show called... I'm gonna is it Ink Master? What is it called? Ink Master da 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 what is the show called? Tattoo Art. Yeah, Ink Master. He was a contestant on Ink Master. And if you remember a few maybe a year ago or two years ago, he got involved in a pretty you know serious car accident which resulted in the death of his best friend. Um I think he was celebrating his birthday and they got a little bit too, you know, a little bit too crunk, a little bit too hyphy, a little bit too excited and decided to get in his, you know, expensive McLaren, a supercar that you probably shouldn't be driving. There seems to be a tendency and a current trend going on at the moment with all of these, you know, um newly minted influencers who have too much money and are probably spending their money on the cars that they probably shouldn't do at the time of their lives or they're in now at the moment, you know, driving those supercars. If you're familiar with those sort of uh, car shows, they're not the most easiest of cars to manage, even if you're a very experienced driver. So I can imagine somebody quite young who hasn't necessarily had enough experience driving other whips will find it hard to handle. And then, of course, unfortunately, they got involved in an accident, ended up smashing into a pole or something, and which resulted in the death of his best friend. Um, so the story was pretty tragic right but then when you find out and you dig deep into it and you find out that they were both intoxicated um they still got behind the wheel even though we live in the era of uber and there clearly is no excuse really for the most part it feels like to get involved in anything that inv that kind of is resembles a dui um at all there's there's too many options out there for you to kind of avoid those circumstances i think in the past maybe there was um some sort of val I wouldn't say validation but you could be excused for maybe uh taking a chance and getting in a car a little bit tipsy and deciding to go home um i remember when i was younger that used to be a thing right you'd get in people's cars and even sometimes family members uncles and stuff will take you back home after they've been you know smashing stellas at a party somewhere and you'll be in the back like just holding onto the seat hoping you get them in one piece and usually you did right oddly enough you didn't really get involved in an accident i guess there was a bit of fight or flight going on with whatever relative that you had but it's not it's not something that you'd want to do nowadays especially again considering the profile of these guys they're very well known um any sort of accident that you do get involved in it's not going to just get swept underneath the rug um they've obviously again um you know have so much disposable income that gives them access to cars that they probably shouldn't be driving at this stage of their lives and in general with those sort of whips the consequences are pretty grave right you drive a supercar with enough horsepower and you don't know how to handle it you could really get yourself in a really sticky situation and we've seen many many hollywood stars unfortunately perish in that kind of fashion but the story is pretty tragic right overall in general right a very well-known um, ink masters reality tv show guy that does tattoos who's kind of coming up and then he event uh, unfortunately gets his youtuber friend i think he's a big youtuber um i'm killed in the process the funny thing or the, the the humorous side of this not humorous not humorous at all but anyway you know what i mean the interesting thing about this is that somehow brendan shaw been setting himself into this right and he i think was I think he got a tattoo from this guy just before the accident happened. I'm not sure which one it was. It was a number of one of these kind of stupid tattoos that he has. And then after the incident happened, he was kind of very quick to say that it wasn't his fault. He like, you know, there's more to the story. They were both like just kind of excused the behavior, which was pretty um, inexcusable, you know, to be completely honest. And then when you read the story, it makes it even worse. So, um, this is the this is obviously his wikipedia so this is the actual incident itself right you've got um daniel silver over here and then you unfortunately you have the victim of the crash here so crash and arrest on sunday the 10th of may 2020 around 9 30 or 9 39 sorry p.m youtuber cory labari was killed when silver crashed his 2020 mclaren 600 lt after losing control of the vehicle he ran off the road and hit the tree and then a street sign in the north hollywood silver attempted to flee the scene but was stopped by a witness of the crash so that's what makes it horrible right not the fact that you got involved in an accident the fact that you tried to leave flee the scene when your friend was, I'm assuming he probably looked to the right and saw his friend was probably dead on arrival, right? And probably thought he couldn't save him. But still, the fact that that's your best friend and then you decide to flee the scene is probably antithetical to the entire Hollywood LA relationships, right? They were having a blast. They were out for his birthday, you know, painting the town red. They were going to One Oak, going to all these, you know, great little, 
eateries and whatever it may be around Hollywood and having a great time, really bonding, probably told themselves, probably told, you know, how, you know, probably said how much they love each other in the toilet whilst, you know, dabbing, um, you know, sprinklings of, of flipping molly and rubbing it against their gums. They were having a great moment, broing out, really connecting. And then in a moment where he probably needed the help most, his friend ditches him and tries to save himself. That is the you know antithesis of what it means to have friends in Hollywood, right? They're just there when it's a good time and not there when it's a bad time. It's super, super bad. Anyway, it continues and it says, um, but that was stopped and witnesses, oh, I think I've got to get, is it close? Oh, it's close. So that continues, but that was stopped by witnesses that the crash, both LeBarry and Silver were transported to a local hospital where LeBarry succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead. LeBarry and Silver had reportedly been at a party earlier to celebrate LeBarry's 25th birthday, with sources saying that they would be drinking the whole night. Silver was arrested and booked for murder at Los Angeles Department of Police on Monday. He was held at LAPD jail. Um, in Van Nuys for a $2 million bail. Silver charged for murder and pleaded not guilty for the charge, right? LeBarra's parents, Simon Debris and Lisa Burton, filed a wrongful death against Silver. In July 2020, he pleaded no contest to the death of LeBarra, so he accepted a plea deal to get a lighter sentence. On August of 25th, 2020, he was sentenced to one year in prison. So imagine, right? This guy knowingly and willingly goes into a car of his best friend. They're both liquored up. They probably got other class a substances in their system they get in a supercar which is probably you know far exceeds his ability to drive and then when they crash he flees the scene right so imagine it's not you know let's say they they're in it together and they're both responsible in the, the incident but they get into a car crash and he runs away leaves his friend for dead he only gets reprimanded because a witness stops him why right? this is a witness stopped him on the crash but then he still manages to get a plea deal because guess what he's got the money right he's got the access he's got the funds to allow him to basically circumnavigate the court process and circumnavigate the grave consequences that will come to anybody else who is just a normal average everyday person but the irony of it is a normal average day everyday person wouldn't leave their friend like this they wouldn't just ditch them right they're not they're not hollywood elites they wouldn't be worried about their career first they'd be worried about the safety and um, health of their friend who they were just celebrating a good time with a few minutes ago you know in a bar so it continues here so, and, and then um, he pleaded not guilty to contest on August 20 he was sentenced to one year in prison um, with five years of formal probation under 50 hours of community service which is insane crazy light sentence in October 8th 2020 Silver was released from custody after serving his sentence in January 2021 Silver's insurance company which is the worst bit about this right then claimed that Le Barry caused his own death although Silver has claimed he did not have time to review the complaint so this guy goes again let's just stress how flipping scummy these people are right and why sometimes you have to be careful about what you kind of look at and kind of wish for to have in your own life as amazing as it would be to have the contacts and the network that these people have and the access is really good right you get to go to Boa Steakhouse and hang out with all these cool people your Instagram followers will probably go up exponentially you'll have a great time hanging out with these guys drinking laughing bloody blah blah blah, blah. When you're really, really in pain and you've got troubles and you're in a really bad situation, you can't count on these people. Look what happened. They got involved in the car crash. They were probably both to blame for the crash, right? The fact that they were liquored up and probably had drugs in their system. But the moment that required a friend to step up and sort of be like, hey, I'm going to look after you. I'm going to be there for you in your last dying moments. The guy ran. He ran away, right? Flee the scene with his friend still in the car, right? Gasping for these last bats of breath. Then... He continued on, right? Then he only got stopped by a witness. Then he got sentenced to only one year in prison. One, one year. Only one year in prison because he has funds and he's Daniel Silver and people probably know him and he has clout and blah, de, blah, de, blah, blah, blah. And then when he gets released after that one year in prison, his insurance company decides to claim that LeBarry, his best friend, caused his own death even though he wasn't driving the vehicle. How insane is that? I guess maybe they could argue he wasn't wearing a seatbelt or something on those kind of lines. But how scummy is that? And then now, you know, as per usual, because he's probably feeling the heat and he knows the kind of um, the general consensus with people in general, with how he kind of acted is probably quite negative. He's now decided to put out a YouTube video on his channel um, explaining his actions. And we'll watch a little bit of it now. And uh, finally enough, 
the likes and dislike has been disabled so you can't see how many likes and dislikes that he has and he's turned off the comments right classic behavior of these kind of people absolutely classic so let's hear what he has to say and how he can explain the fact that he left his friend for dead and what he kind of wants to do now going forward because you'd think right again i'm you know retribution is retribution you can come back and have a life and be back and whatever you need to do um, I'm a big believer in like, you know, the the audience should be the one that decides if you're counseled or not. I don't think institutions and corporations and platforms should decide whether or not you can have a voice. The audience should decide whether or not they had enough of you or whether or not they want to hear more from you, right? So the interesting thing about this, it seems like he's it's more of a self-preservation thing. He wants to get in front of it and make sure he kind of is in charge of the narrative to basically save his own skin and present him to be a, like a good person who got involved in an unfortunate incident. But ultimately, this is only for the benefit of his own career, because obviously he probably sees, you know, um, the only way to get back is to kind of get out there and get in front of the story. But part of me thinks if you get involved in such an incident that results in the death of your best friend, you kind of maybe forfeit the right to have a sort of um, what you call it, an influencer life of some sort. Right. Don't you forfeit it some way? Don't you think again? The audience should, should judge. The audience should be the ones who ultimately decide your fate. But I think if you get involved in such an incident, if you're accused, if you're convicted of manslaughter, murder, whatever it may be, molestation, you probably you probably forfeit the right to be a public figure of some extent. You probably do. That's probably why the stip, you know, some people would argue, that's probably why some people argue like, you know, OJ Simpson should be allowed to tweet and do what he wants because in a court of law, he was obviously found innocent, even though a lot of people believe he probably did it, right? But he was found innocent, so he can kind of get back and do, get on with his normal life. But if you've been involved in such a tragic incident, you should really be for, able to, you should really, of your own volition, forfeit the right to have a public life or be a public figure in any sort of way. You, you should kind of do the honourable thing and just say, look, this is enough enough, right? But let's play what SSA anyway, regardless. As some of you may be aware, last year I was on a car accident that resulted in the death of one of my best friends, Corey. I want to start off by saying how sorry I am for all the pain that everybody's going through. I'm sorry to Corey. I'm sorry to Corey's friends and family, and I'm really sorry to Corey's fans. I know this might not be good enough for some of you, but there's just so much that I want to say, but unfortunately, there's just, I'm just limited to what I can say at this time. This will be the first time that I'm talking about the accident out of respect to the LeBerry family. But making this video has been very difficult for me as it's almost impossible to try to find the right words for something like this. And at the moment, I'm still processing all these emotions that I'm going through and just being forced to confront the fact that this accident resulted in the death of one of my best friends. He's not only a friend of me, but he's a loving son, a brother, a person that had incredible personality, drawing people to him with his kind heart and his humor. It's hard to cope with the fact that his absence will leave a void in hundreds of thousands of people's hearts, especially to the people who have the privilege to know him personally. And I will... So, just, you know, he can't... Um, big up, Gareth. Uh, yes, big up, Greg G. Um, appreciate that, my friend. Um, what was I going to say? So... He's obviously explaining himself. He has to get in front of the situation. I understand, right? Fair enough. You have to kind of, ex he wants to explain himself and he's trying his best to come across as sincere as he wants, as sincere as he can. But he did mention in the beginning, he can't say everything that he wants to say. I'm, I'm assuming because there's still a court order. He's probably still being sued by the family, as I mentioned previously, right? Um, there's stuff going on behind the scenes that's preventing him to say whatever he wants to say. And maybe just out of respect to the family, whatever his reason is. But part of me thinks if you can't say what you need to say now, why even get in front of the camera? Why not just wait? Like, this is probably one of the worst times I would imagine to try and rectify or rewrite the narrative on such a grave incident, considering what we're going through in the world at the moment, right? People don't really, I don't, I'm not, I don't really feel like people have a lot of sympathy and a lot of empathy at the moment for celebrities in any way, shape or form, because they've been spending most of their, you know, what, the last 11 months, sometimes 18 months, locked in indoors due to the virus going on at the moment. They're seeing these people flying around the world and kind of not really abiding by the rules, playgraves happening all over the place, right? They're not really... They don't really have the capacity to like feel any sort of empathy for these people. So if ever there was a time where 
you shouldn't be speaking and trying to basically fly the woe is me flag. This would probably be it. I would imagine so. But what do I know? Always cherish every single moment that I had with him. When I moved to LA, he's one of the first people I met. And because we're so similar, we instantly bonded. It felt like we've been friends our entire lives. Corey would go out of his way to invite me places. And he was just always great at making people feel welcome. I'll never forget how much that meant to me. And I'll think about him every single day for the rest of my life. After the accident, all I could do is keep thinking about how the family was doing and the pain that they just must be going through. When I was in the hospital, I was able to see the news unfold and I watched as the media kept spreading this misinformation. A few months after the crash, the LeBerry family sent a letter to the judge asking for the second degree murder charge to be brought down to manslaughter based on the facts that were not known at the time of the accident. And I just want to say thank you so much to the Barry family for recognizing that this was a tragic accident. <laughs> I want to share this letter that the Barry family's lawyer sent to the judge, and this letter is public document. So the first paragraph starts off by thanking John and Yasmin, which are the DA that were working on the case. John, thank you for taking the many calls on this case from right after the accident and listening to my thoughts and requests on the behalf of the Barry family up to and including today. Your quick response to this matter and your close examination Come on, get to it. Let's of go. Hurry up. the family that I represent. And thank you to instructed that the prosecutors and judges should take into account the victim's thoughts and opinions when determining a just and fair resolution to a criminal matter. In this email, I speak on behalf of the surviving family of Corey. I am not involved in any civil case, and I'm only here in capacity allowed by Marcy's Law. When the incident first occurred, I was asked to review the facts known at the time. Come on, hurry up, get to a point. Los Angeles County District Attorney Office did its own evaluation and decided to file the most serious charges possible, second degree murder. I am not here as an advocate for the prosecution of the accident. I have spent many hours with the LeBerry family and they are smart, kind, and an empathetic group that has to deal with an early death of their son and brother, Corey LeBerry. LAPD has been very forthright with me about the facts of the case, as okay. well as the DA's office. Come on, get to the point. Our own investigation has been slightly faster than allowed by law. The witness's statement indicates the actions of Mr. Silva was not that egregious at the time of impact. The roadway was not straight, and in fact, the street jogs out near the location of the accident. There was gravel placed by homeowners near the accidents where drivers crashed into the same tree. The drivers in these other accidents were not under the influence, and these accidents have occurred at night as well during the daylight hours. The car so what's he trying to say then? That because he had accident, that road was prone to accidents that somehow absolved him from responsibility? Because the residents of that area put gravel on the floor, I don't know, to help with the grip or to whatever it may be, just to improve the road in general, that it somehow absolves them. This is a pretty shitty apology, I have to be honest. Let's continue, though. The car that Mr. Silva drove was just purchased, and the horsepower and torque were unknown to Mr. Silva as he purchased the car within days of the accident. The fact that the had a profound impact on the hearts and minds of the LeBerry family. Most important, making their decision to request a dismissal of the secondary murder charges in the fact that the family thought long and hard about what Corey would have wanted in this case. So essentially what it seems like, the LeBerry family are absolute angels and saints. And because they knew how much Corey loved Daniel Silva, they wanted to spare him the pain. They're already suffering as it is, losing their son, right? They didn't want to extend and kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, unnecessarily have Daniel Silva's family go through the same, if not the worst pain that they're going through by having him in prison for decades or whatever it may have been. So they kind of, out of the kindness of their heart, did some Christian, Catholic, religious thing, forgave him and then asked the judge to lower the charges. That's essentially what he's basically saying. But to you, again, this, this is the thing where I think... You, he kind of lacks a little, I won't say grace, but he lacks a little bit of um, courtesy, a little bit of uh, um, just decency, right? Because if you if you were forgiven by the family behind the scenes and they sort of 
essentially spare your life and only put you in a position where you only spent a year in jail you would probably use the opportunity to kind of you know step away from the lion light and just work on yourself in it right you've got a whole life to live you can kind of live your life in in kind of service of your friend's memory but this idea that he's now using this as an opportunity to what go back and become a, a flipping majiggy or a, a celebrity tattoo artist that's pretty insane like legitimately insane and again we haven't got any update as if like has he update has he changed his lifestyle has he committed to kind of what going sober is he getting help on something like what has he done outside of this situation apart from using the apology so apart from using the forgiveness from the victim's family to kind of propel his career forward or to kind of you know get it back up and running this is pretty yucky from what i've seen so far again i've only watched this just the first time watching this i don't have any other information if there's anything else out there that i'm not really aware of so be it i'm just commenting on what i see but this kind of seems a bit disgusting i have to be completely honest mr silva was a very close friend of what's up they choose me they what's good upon each other during their difficult times in los angeles both have recently seen recent successes in their individual professions. Mr. Silva has been a nationally recognized tattoo artist. Jesus Christ. In social media circles and has an enormous following. The Berry family was aware that Mr. Silva was having a very difficult time around the date of the accident. It was only a few years before Mr. Silva's brother was killed in a car accident. Oh my God. No wonder, no so, wonder he turned off the comments and the like and dislike. No wonder he turned them off. No wonder. He's sitting here excusing his behavior because he suffered a loss in his own family, because he was going through his own personal issues, hash, you know, quote unquote, mental health issues. Like this guy is a piece of work, isn't it? The self-preservation here is just, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The A family believes that Koi would not want to see Mr. Silva imprisoned for what now appears to be a tragic accident. The Berry family feels the same way. Yes, what's up, uh, Joshua? What's up, Hardinzy what Payne? I'm good, man. Under the California law, they ask your consideration in seeking a minimal sentence, yet just sentence. Jesus. They believe that Mr. Silva can do more good teaching young people about their actions and consequences that occur from quick actions without much thought. On a personal note, I want to say that in the capacity as a prosecutor for almost 15 years, and now a defense attorney for almost 12 years. I've rarely come across a more thoughtful and understanding family. They recognize the difference between a person placing themselves in a situation that is so reckless that a person is killed, and a horrific accident in which circumstances come together resulting in one person accidentally killing their close friend. I'm to be fair as well, right? As hard as I'm being on a guy, he does look pretty distraught. I don't, I'm, not, I'm sure he's not living the Vida Loca at the moment. He's probably going through his own internal hell at the moment um, due to the actions of that night. He's probably still suffering, which is maybe the only sort of retribution that he's ever going to face. And, you know, it's internal damnation on this earth. It's probably the worst thing, right? The fact that you have to live with that in your conscience that you, you know, essentially caused the death of your friend and, you know, um, you know, uh, broke the hearts of many people in his family. Um, that's something that he's probably not going to be able to forgive himself, you know, in, in the long run. But this, but this whole apology thing, like, it just kind of stinks, man. It really does. I'm not going to lie. It kind of stinks. Honored to represent people who look deep into their hearts before seeking vengeance, as the LeBerrys have done in this case. Thank you on the behalf of the LeBerry family in advance for your consideration of their wishes. I believe this letter is a great reflection of Corey's character and how he was raised. It's hard to put into words on how truly grateful I am for the family to send a letter like this in such a difficult time. The fact that they even showed me an ounce of empathy and were able to look past the misinformation instead of seeking vengeance shows how- What is the misinformation? I'm really curious to know what this misinformation was. What could we possibly have gotten wrong in the details of the story? So maybe he's kind of stipulating or arguing the fact that he didn't run from the scene. Maybe he was fleeing, but actually going to get help. And it looked like he was fleeing because I'm, I, let's imagine from, for just like, you know, in terms of just a technical sense, I'd imagine if you're, it's sort of like, if you, if you refuse to get, if you refuse to put on the cuffs when the police arrest you, that essentially is kind of deemed as resist, resisting arrest, isn't it, right? 
if you kind of argue back, if you don't comply. So maybe the act of just leaving the perimeter of the car crash kind of um, by law means you kind of flee the scene. But maybe you didn't. Maybe you was going to run across the road, I don't know, to jump into a coffee shop and try and get them to get help or go to a payphone, whatever. But because you left the scene of the crime, it's categorized as you fleeing the scene. Maybe that's what he's arguing. But I don't really see anything else he could argue against. Like he obviously caused the crash because he was intoxicated. They're both obviously having a bit of a jolly knees up. They incorrectly got it behind the wheel of a car, even though they have the means and the access to order an Uber. And he's driving and the, he's un, inability to handle the car, which he says he bought only what the couple of days earlier than that is what caused the, the deaths of him and his of the, the cause of death of his friend. So I don't really see what more you can add to this that would make it. Um, that would kind of dispel this idea of misinformation. That's what I'm really curious about. What is this misinformation that he speaks about? Because that's the the real because that's the real crux of the issue, right? They were both intoxicated. He was intoxicated because and he was behind the wheel, which isn't obviously the best way to go about things. And then they got involved in an unfortunate accident where one person unfortunately lost their life. That's just it, isn't it? That's basically it. Even without the running away from the scene thing, that's still terrible, right? And it still probably deserves or warrants a lot more than one year in prison. But again, his family, the family of the victim showed great leniency and a lot more empathy than I would have done, to be honest. How compassionate, understanding they really are. I also want to address the accusations against me that I fled the scene after the Oh, crash. here we go. Moments after the accident, two of Corey's friends saw me stumbling away from the vehicle and they claimed that I was running away from the scene. Two homeowners also witnessed the aftermath and said that I was stumbling near the vehicle but to be completely honest, I have no clear memory of what happened immediately after the accident. All I can say uh, is convenient. I broke my hip in three places, I had four broken ribs, I had bleeding and swelling in my brain, and had a severe concussion. I know I'm not the type of person that would leave a friend in a situation like that. And if I was not disorientated, I'd have done everything in my power to help Corey. Lastly, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has shown love and support for Corey and I. And I've had a long time to reflect on myself and my actions. I want to be a positive influence and an advocate for safe driving. And I hope one day I can sit down with Corey's family and tell them how sorry I truly am. That's tough, man. That's tough. I don't know. If I'm Corey's family, I'm not able to forgive that guy. But again, they've got much bigger hearts than I have. I guess maybe, you know, I would, like I said previously, I think in this moment that we're going through now in the moment in the world with this virus and everyone in lockdown, um, the tendency to be <laughs> empathetic to people that do such things to you is probably thin or probably low. But some people just have amazing hearts, isn't it? And maybe going through this moment that we're going through in time and just like I said previously, they're already suffering the greatest of pain that any family could suffer, you know, losing a sibling, losing a relative, um, especially so young with so much life to live. They're probably like, you know what? We don't want to extend this feeling to anybody else. We want them to kind of be able to just move on from this situation as best they can. I'm talking about, you know, Daniel Silva, but Jesus, man, I'm interested to see the response to this. Again, we're not going to see anything from here because, again, the dislikes have been turned off and the comments are off. But I'm interested to see what people like Brendan Schaub and others have to say about this and how they excuse this sort of behavior because, God damn it, it's really bad.